Welcome to Diggins Garden Tech. I'm Farmer Tyler at Grow Big Supply, here with Sean Lucas, the Director of Education. And today we're looking at environmental controls. So what do we have in front of us? Uh, we have a very basic system up here. This is a, a, a Saturn III by Titan Controls, uh, and just some different fans, but uh, circulation fans and ventilation fans, just to show how the different apparatus work. Uh, this is all connected to a uh, CO2 canister for supplemental CO2. Um, and down here we have a hygrothermometer to show our relative humidity in the temperature. So some indoor growers may have already a lot of the equipment like AC mm -hmm. units, CO2, yep. lighting. What's the advantage of having them all in one brain? It's, it comes down to efficiency in the garden. Um, when you're using supplemental CO2, CO2 does come at a premium. So if you have to turn on vent fans or, or air conditioners or whatnot to exchange air for either humidity or temperature reasons, uh, you're going to dump out all the CO2 in the room. So with the high-tech systems like this that talk with each other, uh, when I turn on a fan, say, automatically will turn off my CO2 so I'm just not running gas and pushing it out of the room. Okay. So some growers, especially outdoor growers, may not be familiar with supplemental CO2. Mm -hmm. Why would you add CO2 to a growing environment? Um, CO2 does, and especially supplemental CO2 does, is act as an additional carbon source, which is the building blocks of, of all life. Okay. Uh, so when I have supplemental CO2 at, at higher parts per million than is typically in the air, uh, you're going to experience uh, higher growth rates, higher density of fruits, higher clusterings of fruits. Uh, it's a yield thing. Specifically with the CO2, I want to make sure it's, it's talking in with our ventilation fans. Okay. Right? So if air is being exhausted from a room from either mm -hmm. heat or humidity, I want to be able to turn off the, the, the CO2 so it's not wasted. Okay. The other side of that, when these things, when the parameters are back to where we want them in the room, the right temperature, the right RH, uh, I want that CO2 to get to the proper PPM as, quick as, as quickly as we can. Uh, so units like this and other similar units uh, have CO2 PPM readers uh, and therefore dosers so they can control the uh, regulation of the tank. So I, I see it has CO2 sensors, humidity sensors, and temperature sensors. Yes. What would you do with humidity? In the structure of the plant, on the bottom of the leaf are, are holes called stoma. And this is where the plant breathes through. Breathes through. Okay. So the actual humidity in the room, the RH, or the relative humidity, can actually dictate how open and closed these stomata are. So if you have a very high humidity room, um, uh, you can constrict the amount of transpiration. Uh, okay. uh, and when you constrict the transpiration, that constricts nutrient uptake and therefore growth. So humidity is very important to control. Also with high humidities, uh, we're in danger of, of powdery mildew and different mildews, mildews, molds, and fungi. So by manipulating temperature, humidity, CO2, we're, we're manipulating so many factors. Absolutely. The, the speed of the plant, the yep. environmental conditions for pathogens. Yep. That's pretty incredible. It really is. Atmospheric control is, is the key to indoor gardening. Thank you, Sean, for Thank giving you, me a tour of, of environmental controls. Please follow the link if you'd like to take a class with Sean or an expert in your area. Thank you.